here is a slide from a presentation by Lisa Hirschman. It's discussed in more detail in the LBC clip and then also the A intro. All I want to express here is if we can help students teach their companies how to increase that 1% up to 2 or 3%, it would improve their productivity by 2 or 300%. So let's explore the processes. Welcome to our session number six. This is value stream mapping. References. Learning to see. That is primarily the book that a lot of the uh, value stream mapping is taught out of. Also have a 67 slide presentation from Lean Enterprise on value streams and have a copy of a industry presentation by Joe Ely, who's Director of Operations at Cook Biotech in West Lafayette. As a presentation at the Wabash Valley Lean Network uh, meeting. This uh, Learning to See book is a very valuable book. We'll talk about things like uh, cycle time, C slash T, change over time, C slash O, equipment uptimes, U slash T. We'll talk about current state value streams. And all that is, a current state value stream is just a one page picture of what your particular value stream or process stream looks like currently. And then we'll go through some there's some help in the Learning to See book. There's eight questions, and I'll show you how those all fit in. And then we'll go and develop a new one-page sheet. The target condition, or the future state value stream map. Now, uh, Director Ely showed how Cook Biotech used the, the uh, value stream mapping process to solve a good problem. How to meet the tripling of a customer's demand for their product without one, hiring or training new employees, adding two more shifts, or any shifts actually, adding many hours of overtime, or inv not investing in large amounts of capital for new equipment. Triple the product with very little additional added expense. And since the purpose of the current state value stream mapping is to point out areas that need improvement, it also helps the Kaizeneer to find an opportunity to develop, implement, and share Kaizen implementation ideas. Now, before we start with the value stream mapping, what I want to know is, let's, let's talk about you. Where are you? One possibility. You're in the process of completing your chosen degree in uh, project management, business management, electrical engineering, EET, IT, etc. You have completed some continuous improvement lean concepts training, received some SME student chapter certificates to add your portfolio, which looks nice, and uh, added your skill sets to your resume. You have participated in some job fairs. The last one seemed uh, pretty favorable. You're hoping you get a, a, a job offer. In the mail, you receive a, a very interesting offer from one of the companies you interviewed called Acme Manufacturing. They offer a trial project to have the total processing time of one line, one of their lines. They offer you $10,000 for this project and they offer you a job for $150,000 a year, a job reporting directly to the operations manager if the project is successful. Wow, you think? I, I, I think I'd like to have that job, but how do I complete that project? I suggest you read on. Maybe you'll find some help there. Okay, in your, in your lean, training, you've learned a little bit about value stream mapping and you realize that what you, to be able to accomplish this job or tackle it, first you've got to map a current state value stream and then develop the future state value stream map. The first one just tells you what it's doing now and the future one is one that you can move towards to get better. 
So you get a copy of the Learning to See book, you review it along with this video, and you say, you can do this. So you send Acme Manufacturing a letter accepting the project, telling them it'll likely take you a week to complete the project, and you'll need to start by taking a gimbal walk on the line. Why is that important, that last part there? Because it gives you a visual of how the thing is set at this time right now mm -hmm. and how you want to uh, set it up for the value stream that. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any? Uh, that's good. Now, does anybody else have another take on that? Or an additional take on that, I should say, not another? What happens when you go to a company like that? The first thing they want to do is give you the dog and pony show about how great they are and all this stuff in the boardroom and, right? Yeah. That ain't where you want to start. Yeah, you want to be actually You want to get out on scene. the line, see what's really going on out there. Now, yes, you're going to go back to the boardroom and you're going to meet with managers to fill in any additional information you need to, to uh, develop the uh, CSVM, the current state value stream map. And then when you get the project completed, of course, you'll share it with them in the boardroom, right? So they accept and set it up. So you go and you take a gimbal walk. You walk the line. You want to start at shipping and go back every process on that line noting the number and types of processes in this line. And while you're there, you take out your stopwatch and you record the CT and CO times for each process. C slash T is cycle time. It's the time it takes the operator to complete one item. Picks up an item, completes it, and moves it to the next station. C slash O is changeover. No, very few lines actually crank out hundreds of thousands of identical products. So what is the time if you're going to do this item and now you got to do next time you got to do this item, how long is it going to take you to change equipment over so you can build the next item? That's the CO time. You record, you time those with your own stopwatch and record those because you'll need them later. You'll also count the number and, and record the number of items by type that sit between two adjacent processes. It's called inventory waste. So you want to count and record those numbers. We'll show you what to do with them later. I need to record the uptime or the U slash T for each process. I need to record the number of operator needed for each process. Now what you need is some quiet time in your oversized sheet of graph paper so you can start working on it. So after you've done a little work with your graph paper, you need to complete it. So now you're ready to go meet with the manager in the boardrooms. The items you're going to need are things like uh, number of shifts per day that are worked, the hours worked per shift, a number of days worked per month, who is the customer? The number of parts by type purchased per month. The number of parts per tray. The number of shifts that customer works per day and any shipping information. You also need to know about the raw material suppliers. Type and quantity of materials delivered and current delivery schedule. You also really need to know who controls the production schedule of this line and how and what types of information they receive both from the customer and material supplier. And with all this information, you can now complete the current state value stream map, including the process control efficiency, a line and percentage, the paying and getting paid. This is something that's crucial. You want to shorten the time between the time when you have to pay for incoming materials 
to the time when the customer's willing to pay you for a delivered product. And that's what they're basically asking you to cut in half, is that time. The, the time from paying to getting paid. And a, a quality, quick and dirty quality evaluation of your success is number of inventory turns per year. Now, we have completed the current state value stream map. And we'll look at one here uh, with the next slide. And we'll talk our way through it. So we're ready to review it with the managers on in the boardroom. Expect, expect some head shaking and some very tough questions. After all, this is turf protection time. What do you mean? my line does what or doesn't do what that's reason you don't want to go to the boardroom in the first place because the manager all get up there to tell you what a great job we're doing and minimum inventory and blah 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 and all you want to say is really can i go out and time that check that for myself that's the two phrases the guy that taught me how to do a, a value stream map like really and can I measure that for myself? Can I go see? <laughs> you need to know what's really out there. Note, up to this stage, and I'll show you it here in a minute, next slide, you've done nothing yet, but to expose them to the truth of how their line is currently performing, including all of its waste, warts, inefficiencies, and all. All, this, all the CSVSM shows you is how it currently operating today. Now, you would like for them to agree with you and say, charge on, man. And yeah, that may not happen. But reconciliation based on your observations is acceptable to move on. Now, let's look and see what you found. In this picture of a current state value stream map of Acme Manufacturing Line, one of their lines, and we're going to discuss it. But bear in mind as we're doing this, the paying to getting paid or the process, uh, the total process time is 23.6 days. What that means is from the time you get your coil steel delivered by Michigan Steel to the time you start shipping products from that coil of steel is 23.6 days. Your inventory turns at 20, 20 days a month times 12 months is 240 days and you're divided by 23.6 is you're lucky to get 10 inventory turns a year. Your process control efficiency, where basically you're adding the value add by the non-value add is about, is less than 1%. In other words, 99%, 99.1% approximately of what you do between receiving the coils and shipping product is waste. Stuff the customer won't even want to pay for. So let's see how we got there and, and discuss, view it and discuss this, uh, what we've done.